Hello! Do you know, Radio Master does quite an odd thing. It tends to listen to its customers. Its customers wanted a surface radio for driving their cars and boats. Out comes the MT12. And then their customers said, hey, we would really like a module that worked on the 868 or 915 band for getting longer range and stuff. Can you do that? And Radio Master said yes. And so they have. First off, why would you want to go to 868 and 915? And I mentioned the two frequencies because there's a distinction between the territories. In the UK and much of Europe, we need to use the 868 frequency because 900 is where our cell phones uh, go and you don't want to mix the two. And in the US, you're free to use the 915 band because presumably cell phones are on somewhere else. You'll have to look it up for your own country what's, what's legal, what's not legal. Make sure you don't stray into the cell band because that would be bad. So Express LRS has been pretty much dominated by the 2.4 stuff. Why? Because the, the packet rates are amazing and the latency is very low. We're talking about a thousand hertz now and the antenna is very small. Look at this tiny one here. It just juts out there. But for a long time the 868915 very popular. Of course that's what Crossfire used. Um, the antennas are bigger. Here's one here. This was an old uh, R9 one but the packet rates were lower. They were still much faster than SBUS, and of course lots of people absolutely swore by this sort of thing for racing uh, and just flying around generally, and many people still do, although 2.4 is faster. And there hasn't been an awful lot of support. Not many manufacturers jumping on this one because they're like, oh, it's all, it's all about speed. Let's get faster packet rates. Let's uh, really appeal to the racers. But a lot of us are not racing around, and a lot of us were using old stuff converted. This was my R9 module which used 868 and I converted it to Express LRS and I converted the receivers. There's a, a video about it up here which tells you how to do it. But I'd much prefer to have a, a fully functional designed for the job module to do this. So why would you want to go with a, a larger antenna and a slower packet rate instead of a smaller one and a faster packet rate? Well that's all to do with how a lower frequency signal works. Although a high frequency signal like 2.4 gigahertz goes very quickly it doesn't go through buildings that well. You, you must have noticed this. If, uh, if your Wi-Fi, which is maybe on 2.4, maybe on 5.8, then higher frequency, the worse it is. If you go in a different room, if you're downstairs, it can be very difficult for the signal to reach because it has to go through stuff. And carrying on with the analogy of Wi-Fi, if you then wander off into the garden, you, you may find that the range has dropped off because 2.4 doesn't go as far for the same amount of power. Where we've got a larger wavelength, on a lower frequency like 868 or 915, um, buildings don't present that much of a problem. They will penetrate better and the signal will travel further for the same power. If you look at the Express LRS range competition, um, you will find that the largest flight that was done was on 2.4, which was 100 uh, kilometers and was done on a two watt system, which I think was this one, the Ranger. Now there's not as many people flying on 868 or 915, let's just call it the 900 band for sure. Um, but the person that went 40.7 kilometers did it on 10 milliwatts, which is a little bit crazy. Now there was also someone that went 40 kilometers on 2.4 or 25 milliwatts, but generally it can just go further. And this is where this system's aimed for. It's aimed for the people that want to go further. It's aimed for the people that want to do more crazy bandos but not lose the signal. Of course, you still have to be careful with your video signal. That's quite easy to lose through concrete because that's an even higher thing. If your video is on 5.8 gigahertz, it penetrates even less well than 2.4 does. So your video will probably go before your radio signal, but at least if you're flying around a building, you still have the option of powering up and hopefully getting over the top of it so you can see your video again. So what have Radio Master released? What I want to show you today is the Bandit series. Just like the Ranger that came in three varieties, this is the all singing and all dancing one. There was also uh, two other ones that were specifically for the sort of the, the micro and nano bays. They have released three versions. You've got the all singing or dancing one here, which has got this lovely embossed thing which you can't quite see unless I do that. And you've got the two slightly smaller ones which have specific fittings. The two smaller ones look like this. This is the micro or JR type fit. This is the Dano. So the micro one or JR fit will fit things like your TX12 here, the TX16. You will notice it's got a nice little LED and even though these are the smaller, not all singing or dancing ones, they have got uh, a little OLED display with a five position joystick. So that's where it's sort of been upgraded from the Ranger module. 
and the nano module will fit things like the Zorro or you know whatever's got a, a nano bay. Aside from powering up for obviously plugging into uh, a bay, you'll notice it's got a little XT30 socket here which will take a voltage from 6 volts to 16.8 volts so it's a direct 4S battery or you've got a USB-C port here which you can power it up from and you can do uh, updates that way although you can also do updates via Wi-Fi you just plug it into your radio and you turn Wi-Fi on and you go from there. So what's the all singing all dancing module look like? Looks like this. It's a, a lovely piece of aluminium it's really going to help with the cooling because let me tell you I just talked about uh, the records on uh, using 900 and somebody did 40 kilometers on 10 milliwatts. This goes up to one watt which is an insane amount of power. As I said, you don't get the same sort of speed you do on 2.4, whereas 2.4 goes up to 1000 hertz and is very fast, this goes up to 200 hertz, which is still pretty fast, and you can drop that packet rate as low as 25 hertz if you're doing some really, really ultra long range things, probably on fixed wing for that sort of rate. Now, you'll notice on the back, it's a, it's a bit weird, it's got these little dots. Why is that? Because they include adapters for both types of connection. So in the box, you get this, which is a JR or micro bay type adapter and this one which is a nano adapter and it's got some holes in the back here and if you line those holes up push it on it goes in like that what you've also got in here is this little pack of screws and an allen key there are three screw holes there so that tightens that on properly you've also got in here this little servo lead to some sort of JST adapter. This is uh, labelled as a, a Futaba adapter. I'm guessing on Futaba you've got something on the back of the radio you need to plug in and then you can plug into here. There's a little CSRF port under there to, to put that type of radio on board. So it's then compatible with your Futaba in that way. Also in the box, because you notice this has just got the antenna protector at the moment, we have this T adapter, which is essentially the same as those ones. But as well as that, this is kind of an omnidirectional, the, the radiation pattern sort of this way, so pointing towards your model, um, either hor horizontally polarised or vertically polarised. Also in the box is this Moxon antenna, which goes on like that. But don't worry, because if you want a little one, the Moxon antenna is also available separately and is exactly the same as the one you get in the other box. Now, if you're wondering what's the difference between the regular module, because it's got an OLED, and the all singing or dancing one, it's got a bigger OLED, um, it's got more little uh, lights here. It's got these programmable sort of quick buttons for doing something. You press it and something will happen and it might be that like, you know, where you want to up the power, up the speed, something like that. Um, a quick word about Moxon as well, because they're often confused. I know when I go out, I'm like this and you might think that the radiation pattern comes out there. It doesn't, it comes out there. But when I'm flying, I'm generally holding my radio like this and the model's up there, so hence it's going this way. And again, with a Moxon, thinking about it going this way, this is for a horizontally polarized antenna. By that, I mean your antenna is like that. It's in the horizontal position. If it was like that, it'd be vertical. And if you've got one in vertical, mostly on fixed wing, because they're quite large, you do it like that and you'd be flying like this, kind of pointing at your model. The beam width for this is about 145 degrees. So this is keeping it, you do need to keep it um, in line. And of course the further you go, the more crucial that is. So the, the sort of, the, the places where it's, it's worse uh, are gonna be at, at the sides essentially and behind you. So in front, pointing at your model if you're using this, but you'd be using a Moxon for sort of specific long range missions. For your day to day stuff, your regular T more of an omni antenna will work better. So I mentioned previously I had to convert this old R9 module to Express LRS and the receivers as well. So obviously we'd like proper receivers that are purpose built for this and guess what? They've bought some out. We got the BR1 and the BR3. This is how the BR1 comes out of the bag. This comes with this Y antenna as attached to it. You also have in the box a bit more of a robust antenna. This is much better if you're uh, zip tying it to a quad frame. And of course you get some wire to solder in and some heat shrinks once you've got that done to make it all safe. This has telemetry power 50 milliwatts and um, is a good all round five inch receiver essentially. This is the BR3. It comes like this. You will notice it's got two antennas because it's a diversity receiver and it has a whopping 
a telemetry power of 500 milliwatts. You can set that, so if it goes as low as 100 milliwatts up to 500 milliwatts, you can set that via the Lua script. But um, essentially, you should never lose telemetry on this unless you're a very, very long way away. So this is more of your long range mission. And obviously you need to think about how to, where to put these. On a quad, I find dual antennas, uh, especially big ones, are a little bit more tricky, much easier to do on, on fixed wing. And I, I kind of think this is where this, this comes in. But you're, you know, your larger, uh, seven inch to up to nine inch seems to be coming out now for doing the real long range missions. That might be a, a really good upgrade for you. All the modules and the receivers are, are running uh, Express LRS 3.3.1. At the time I'm putting this video out, the modules and the receivers aren't on the Express LRS configurate anymore. Obviously you can go into the Wi-Fi and change a certain amount of things through it. If you want to reflash stuff, then it's due out uh, sometime in December, we think, which uh, I'll have the release to cover these. So let's have a little bit more of a closer look at the module and see what features we've got there available. So I've got the big Bandit module and one of the uh, other ones, this is the Monica one in the TX12 plugged in, just to show you the differences here. And I'm really hoping that the radio emissions coming from them aren't going to uh, screw up the recording. Because obviously if I don't have the external uh, module on then it won't switch on so I have to have that but let's just show you quick so this is the micro module and you'll see it's running uh, version 321 currently at 100 milliwatts at 200 uh, Hertz speed with a 164 telemetry if we go ahead and long press the button we can change things like the packet rate and that goes from 200 hertz down to 25. There's also a D50. I talked about the demos before. It, effectively, it sends twice the amount of packets for, for every one. So it's an even better way of getting your packets through. Uh, we've got TX power. That will go basically as low as 100 milliwatts and then go up to one watt, which is pretty heavy. We've then got the telemetry which you can have standard off 1128, 164, 132, 116, 18, quarter, half race mode. That is essentially the speed of the telemetry signal, the amount of uh, telemetry package you'll get back from your receiver. We've got BLE joypad, so it will put it in Bluetooth joypad mode and you can play a sim that way. Um, bind mode, although I never use this, I always use my um, pass race and Wi-Fi admin, you've got both TX Wi-Fi, RX Wi-Fi, if you're connected, of course, you can put your RX into Wi-Fi mode. Backpack Wi-Fi, this has got a, a Elaris backpack on, so if you watch my video about how to set up backpacks before, you can have one in your goggles, and whenever you change your settings here, they will all mirror each other. Uh, VRX Wi-Fi as well, and then you've got VTX admin, so you can select your channel and band and power. Now, of course, all that is available by using the regular ELRS script and everything goes in there. Uh, for example, the first thing I did was go into Wi-Fi connectivity to set up my passphrase so it'd work. So between this one and its bigger brother, there's not that much of a difference. One is obviously the size of the OLED screens there and the amount of uh, LEDs you have. But the rest is not too dissimilar. If we go in here, you can see a kind of a, a little wave there, which you can't actually see in real life. It's a sort of camera artifact. The packet rate, the TX power, the Telem radio, uh, that's the same. Motion detect is a bit different. Motion detect, off or on. Now, as far as I know, right now, motion detect, and this has got an accelerometer and what's called a G sensor in it, which I think is a gyro. Um, this will basically say, okay, your radio has been laid down or it's stood up, therefore we we'll enter some power management and turn stuff off. The regular ones also say they have an accelerometer, but they haven't got that option, which is kind of interesting. Not something I'm particularly concerned about in this radio, but uh, it's got it all the same. And then you've got the same BLE joypad, bind mode, Wi-Fi admin, VTX admin, that stuff's all the same. You've also got the buttons here, which will do things if we if we press them. You see there, as I just pressed, 
my power's going up. You can hear the fan start up in that one. And on this side, and I'm not sure that that one does at the moment. If I double press it, we go to uh, the VTX admin, so it seems to do some sort of VTX channel thing. But these are set up via Wi-Fi. So if we were to go into Wi-Fi, like that, um, and of course you can do that from the Lua script as well, we have a couple of options when we get to the web page for it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've joined to the Wi-Fi network, the LRS network, and you can see the firmware revisions on 331, and these are options I get. This is, of course, the first thing I would do when getting this module. I've already put my binding phrase in. You can see the regulatory domain is EU868, and if you are not in that area, then, of course, you can change over to FCC915 or AU915 or whichever region you're from. That's well covered. Uh, obviously, as soon as the proper firmware is available, then that will give you a little bit more. So the other thing you've got here is buttons. If you press on buttons, uh, you've basically got uh, your option here. So you, button one is enter binding mode if you short press it three times. Uh, button one long press, as you saw me do, is increase power. So each time you hold it down for 0 0.5 seconds, it increases it to power. Button two, go to the VTX uh, channel menu. Uh, and oh you have to press it two times which why I didn't do anything the first time and send VTX settings with a long press hold and of course you can change any of these like I don't use binding what else can I do so I can say go to the VTX band channel uh, start Wi-Fi into binding mode I like the fact that uh, you can actually do the click multiple times imagine if you accidentally clicked the button when you were flying and entered binding mode that wouldn't be good the fact you have to press it three times is quite nice and you can also change the colors here to anything you like all all the colors under the sun you've got these uh but not that one because it's exactly the same as the other one uh as, as many as you like essentially and you just save that and you're away and good so that's that's the slight difference there in the extra functions of the larger module you've got well welcome outside to the, the grayness uh, it's not raining but it's not exactly nice. So the idea is here that because it's Express LRS, even if I have something like this old R9 module that I uh, converted to Express LRS, I should be able to use this Radio Master module with it. I have to say that I haven't even set a model up for it. This is for the Tyro 129, but I set my quads the same. This should be on version three something, so it should work. Let's plug it in and find out. So to do a quick hover. I say quick hover, because I haven't had time to charge this because normally it's raining, but for this few minutes it's not. Okay, well we've got telemetry. You can see that screen, so let's see if it flies. absolutely fine. Mostly it whinged about its battery not being full, but this module just worked with it without me having to do anything. All I needed to do was put my uh, Express LRS passphrase the same, and I can do that with all the modules, so I can pretty much fly any quad with any radio with all the modules I have. I just need to make sure mine is set up the same way, which they generally are. Now, a quick word for all you guys that are in the European region, and this applies to the big one or either of the smaller modules. Although we run an 868 firmware, it is not LBT compliant. This is the listen before talk thing. And that's mainly because these things aren't really designed to run at 25 milliwatts. Radio Master found they couldn't run this at 25 consistently. It wouldn't hold there. And you'll, you'll see when I was stepping through the power, the lowest air was at 100. So they won't be pursuing the LBT firmware, which means it will never get the CE kite mark. Now, what does this mean for you? Well, if you follow the rules very stringently and you fly all your VTXs on 25 milliwatts only and you know you're always in visual line of sight and you have a spotter and that sort of thing this will apply to you if you're what I will say more a more a regular flyer and you think about 200 milliwatts VTX is fine and uh, a spotter's useful if there's people around but if they're in the middle of the field what's the problem then this really won't apply to you and all the antennas uh, are built 
to work on both 868 or the 915 frequency, which includes the Moxons. So it's not a problem there, it's just something to think about. So you might see these being sold as only a 900 system. Don't worry, you can flash it to 868. The antennas work with it. It just will not be a C kite marked thing and it won't be LBT compliant, but that's that. Now it pains me to say this. Um, if you've been watching my videos, hopefully some of you have, you will know that I like to make something and use it properly, fly something around, drive something around, that sort of thing. Aside from this hover on the, this thing, which has an old uh, R9 receiver that's been flashed to uh, Express LRS, I am unable to go out and do some proper flying on some stuff. Uh, this is mainly due to the weather and I wanted to get this out in time for the release of the product win because you'll be flooded with loads of uh, videos about the same stuff so I thought my one needs to be in there at least. That doesn't mean I'm not going to do it. Consider this a part one, I'll be going for a part two. But it, it, it is hard at the moment. The UK, when it, grey is like, my God, it's a clear day. It, it's very rarely a long period of not raining or horrible wind or it's too cold so bear with me on this one but here's what I want to uh, do with it as far as the BR1 receiver goes which has got the the, uh, the the single antenna not the diversity I want to stick it in this one this is my Chimera 7 if you've been following along with this I built this to sort of try the walk snail out and I've had problems with it crashing and I've got replacement motors and stuff for it um, because they seem to have burnt out. But if you watch the video, I did have a, a 2.4 Express RS receiver. You can just see the antenna there. But I think this was kind of getting a bit swamped by the, the amount of carbon surrounding it. I was getting a very bad signal um, as I was sort of coming around, not too far out, only about sort of three, 400 yards. You could see the, the LQ really drop. So I thought, oh, if I put this antenna in there, it's a lot bigger. It's harder to block. It's better at getting through things. So that's the intention. I'll get the BR1 installed on this one once I finish the rebuild and we'll go out and fly it. And this is designed to be my long range cruiser quad. Hopefully the, the batteries I've got for it now will give it about 20 minutes worth of flight time. As for this guy, the uh, diversity receiver, as mentioned in the MT12 video, I'm going to be working on this car. At the moment, this is the, the 4G setup, which I've just started testing, but I'm intending to have this plank of wood swappable and put a 1.3 gig video system in and obviously I need a good uh, receiver for ground range so I'm thinking the diversity uh, twin 868 antenna obviously this would need to be connected to some sort of flight controller so it would understand CRSF and I will couple that with the Radio Master MT12 which now looks like some weird gun with this thing coming out the, the top of it obviously you've got the module bay expansion so I can put this 868 on there and drive it around. We got pretty good range from 2.4, but I'm looking with uh, that 1.3 gig video to go through around houses, through woods, all sorts, and still hopefully, fingers crossed, have good video and good radio signal. So that's the sort of stuff that's gonna be coming up. In the meantime, of course, all three of the modules, the main bandit or the, the two smaller bandits which fit into micro or nano bay radios, along with the separate Moxon, the BR1 and the BR3 receiver are all now out at Radio Master. And of course, there'll be links down below where you can check that out. And many thanks to Radio Master for sending this along and letting me test them out. I am really looking forward to testing more and I feel really bad for not being able to do it. I really, really want to, but trust me, the weather out there is, is not playing ball right now. Fingers crossed uh, we get some more flying time in before it's, <laughs> it's like spring again. We're, we cross our fingers and hope. Anyway, I hope that video has been helpful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.